Joker. So Joker is the latest DC movie to come out this year, starring Joaquin Phoenix and directed by Todd Phillips, who made the Hunger movie. Hunger Hangover. Yeah, Hangover. I always want to say Hunger Games. When I say Hangover, those Hangover comedies, he did those. Now he's directing this, and this movie is said to be the best film of the year. It was even on my top 10 anticipated films of 2019. I think it was at like number 7-ish. But I saw it tonight. Late showing. This movie is said to be the best film of the year. Number one. It's already got like 5 out of 5 stars. 10 out of 10. It, it's a masterpiece. What are my thoughts on it? Stick around. Joker tells the story about a guy named Arthur who is insane. Yes. And he just wants to be a comedian. That's all he wants to do. He lives with his mom. He takes care of his mom. And he just wants to be a comedian. But an unfortunate set of events set him down a very different dark path. There will be spoilers in this review at some point. But for now, let's just go over the positives. Let's just go over those. And I'll try to stay spoiler free for now. But there are some things I just want to talk about in this movie. Because it is pretty great towards the end. Now... Also, I feel like this is a movie for a specific audience. I just want to warn you, this is, from the trailers, you should know that this is a serious, straightforward, almost drama character study of a film. That's what it really is. It's all about Joker. It's his character throughout, like, 100%. I think he's in every single scene, Joaquin Phoenix. So, it's nobody else's movie. He's not sharing the screen time with anybody. It's his movie. It's building his character. There's not a whole lot of action. There's not a whole lot of comedy. And there's not a whole lot of violence. Don't listen to the fucking public. They're lying to you. So going in with the right mindset, you might enjoy this even more. So don't go in with the wrong mindset. This is not a typical DC movie. This is its own thing, its own universe. I don't read comics, so I don't know if there's a comic out there that this is basically copying onto film. But this is basically very different. This is a very different DC movie, and I love it for that reason. It's rated R. Why couldn't Venom be rated R? Why can't all these Marvel and DC movies be rated R? Bright burn, that was awesome. We needed to get more of these. But the main positive for this movie is Joaquin Phoenix. I thought he did a great job. I love his version of the Joker. He laughs a lot. He has a couple of interesting laughs. He might laugh a little too much to some people because they do have him laugh a lot. And he, I like this new version of the Joker where his laugh is actually a disorder of his. I'm not sure if that's a spoiler. I don't read the comics, but it's not really a spoiler. It's minute one. You know he has a disorder. He laughs a lot. <laughs> I just like this new version. I thought it was very interesting because I'm used to like the Heath Ledger version, which after watching this, I still think Heath Ledger is my favorite Joker, but this is probably number two right here. I think there's some great camera work in this movie. This movie shot beautifully. It's a very well done movie. I love the, the pace. This movie is two hours long and it might feel long, long to someone, but really every scene's needed. There's not like any wasted time and there's no like unnecessary scenes. I thought it was very awesome. It was very effective. I was really interested in the character of Joaquin Phoenix, uh, Arthur Fleck. We get, know, we get to know his name now. I didn't know it before because I'm used to Heath Ledger's like mysterious Joker. We don't know his past. He's got no fingerprints, like no history. Like they don't know who the hell he is. But in this one, we get to know like his whole backstory. And I thought it was very interesting. It erases questions. I even got like a theory of my own of what like, because he's on all kinds of medications. And some things might not be what they seem. But we'll get into that in my spoiler section because I want to talk about, like, my theory. Now let's talk about the violence. Okay, is this a really violent movie? No. But is there some violence? Yes. Towards the very end. Like, once upon a time in Hollywood, you gotta wait for it. And when it comes, it might satisfy some of you. I definitely was cheering and applauding. I was like, yes! Fucking destroy him! It was awesome. But... It wasn't that satisfying. I wanted more. Um, honestly, I think the third act is the best part of the movie when things really start getting crazy and when the Joker's fully unleashed and he knows what he wants to do now and he's got it all mapped out. He knows what he wants to finally be. He's not going to be a comedian no more. He's going to start a movement. I wish we would have gotten more of that crazy Joker because I was wondering, like, when's he going to fully become, like, the Joker? And it's not really until, like, towards the very end. They just kind of, like, take their time building him to that Joker that we know and love, the evil one who wants to cause chaos. They kind of slowly build him up to that, and I thought they did a very good job of that. One small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Now for my little cause, my little nitpicks. There's not really that much to say. I thought it was a pretty great movie, but... The one thing I will say is that there's this little twist. There's a couple of them in this movie. One of them might be debatable. Who knows? But one of them regarding... I won't say it because it's probably going to spoil it. But it was kind of obvious. I knew it like up front as soon as it was happening. I was like, 
is this where this is going? Is this really even, you know, like it was obvious to me. So I felt like they could have rewrote that or just did it in a different way to where when it actually was revealed, because when they reveal it to you, it's supposed to be like this big moment and like just the way the music plays and the way they're revealing it. It's like, oh my gosh. And it's like, no, I, I saw that. Like you kind of orchestrated it and it was very choreographed. I was like, this is where they're going and that's where they went. And just to nitpick it, I felt like some things were kind of forced, like the things that happened to the Joker in the trailer where he's just getting his ass kicked for no reason. It's like, does that happen? Do people steal signs from people and then beat them up for no fucking reason at all? It's just, come on. I guess Arthur just has very, very, very bad luck. So I'll just chalk it up to that. But at the end of the day, this movie was pretty entertaining. It was a wild ride. There's some very what the fuck moments in this film. And there's some very bloody moments towards the end. But don't expect too much of it. Just expect a very well done character study of the Joker building him up to that insane villain that we all know and love. So when it comes to the Joker, if you're a fan of DC comic movies, if you're a fan of drama-like flicks that are very character focused, this is definitely a terrific one to go see. So therefore, go out and buy it. Now there's a couple of things in this movie I wanna point out that I love that I can't talk about. I just wanna talk about that violent scene that everyone's like talking so much about, or like, I just keep hearing like, how violent this movie was. All the way up until this film's release, I just expected a drama, some serious, you know, late 70s. This movie was set in the late 70s. I thought they did a good job with that too, the sets. They did a good job making Gotham look like a hellhole. So kudos to the production design. But man, that scene at the end, the violence, it was awesome. Just, he just gets the, the scissors, stabs the guy in the throat, and then he stabs him right in the fucking eye. It just bangs his head up against the wall like 20 times, and then he lets the little person go. I like that. See, he's not crazy crazy. He still lets good people go. He knows who the bad guys really are. I just love that. And I love when he shot those people on the train. I didn't see that coming. I forgot about the gun at that point. And, and some good humor in here, too. The Andy Gold, I think that that was the comedian. He's He's got a scene in here. And then you got Robert De Niro, who I do not like in real life. I think he should stick to acting and let politics be someone else's job, which is kind of funny in this movie. I think he's doing the same. He says, like, you know, you should stick to comedy, not politics, or something like that. And I was like, you should look, look in the mirror, buddy. That's you. Stick to acting, not politics. But I love when he gets shot in the face, and then he just shoots him, like, four more times in his chest. I was literally clapping in the theater. I was like, fuck that guy. Take him out. Because he really is a shithead in the movie. It's not because I don't like him in real person, his personality, how just obnoxious he is and arrogant. No, in this movie, he's the same person. He's a typical talk show host who thinks he knows everything. He's so smart and awesome. He gets taken out and you just, you hate him. He wants to make a fool of Arthur and even Arthur knows it. And it yeah, when he gets taken out, it's like that chick in the mist. When, you, when she gets shot in the face by that cashier, you want to clap. At least I did. Now, that twist, that thing that was revealed with the, the neighbor down the street, the the lady, I don't, I, I don't even know her name. Was, she, was it ever said? Maybe it was, like once. Her character, it's revealed that she was never at these places. Like, he met her once, and then after that, he just envisioned this date. He envisioned going to her house and immediately, like, making out with her and making love. And it was, like, so far-fetched that it was like an obvious, like, this isn't happening, really. This is a, this is either A, bad writing, or B, she's desperate and fucking weird, and she's into weird guys, or C, this isn't really happening. And then when it was real that it never happened, I was like, well, no dur. But another thing I want to talk about is, like, we know Arthur's on, like, seven medications, and then he's always hallucinating these dates, he's hallucinating this, he keeps daydreaming. So it makes you think, what else isn't real? By the end of it, it's like, did he ever actually go on that talk show? Did he ever actually kill Robert De Niro? Did, was he really the one who shot Bruce Wayne's parents? Like any of that? Was Bruce Wayne really the father? Was his story true? Was his crazy mom's story true? Like she was revealed to be an insane woman, but maybe she was made insane? Like, I don't know. Like I was trying to pay attention. I listened, but I feel like there's debate. I, and I like a movie that you can debate and you can come up with fan theories. Like maybe this is what really happened. Kind of like The Thing. Another reason why I love that movie, like at the end, like who was really The Thing? 
I love movies that open up debates and you can talk about it afterwards. It's not like, all right, I saw it, I don't have to think about it. This is a movie when you leave it, it's on your mind, it stays in there, it resonates, and you just want to debate it, you want to talk to people about it, and that's why it's a great movie. It's not terrific, it's not the best movie of the year to me, because it doesn't really have that rewatchability as much, because I feel like this isn't really rewatchable. Maybe like once a year, maybe, I don't know, like, I would rather watch like a John Wick or <laughs> a Child's Play. So rewatchability, this one doesn't have that much of it, but it's still a great made movie. So yeah, those are my thoughts on it. Did you see it yet? Let me know what your thoughts on it in the comments below. If you haven't seen it yet, I hope you're not still listening because I told you I was going to spoil it later on. But put your thoughts on this film in the comments below. Do you think it is the best film of the year? Do you wish there was more violence like me because I'm a gore hound? Put your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this. If you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and you can become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Yeah.